Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I am your host, Eric Smith, and today I am talking about Star Wars Ronin, a Visions novel by Emma Mieko Candon. Uh, right off the bat, I want to apologize for any mispronunciations, um, and I'm guessing there's going to be many. And the other right off the bat, look at that cover. I love it. Absolutely love that cover. And there's even a nice illustration on the inside. We'll see how well that shows up. There you go. Beautiful. So this is inspired by, based on, whatever you want to call it, the um, Star Wars Visions episode, The Duel. And Star Wars Visions was a series, or is a series, on Disney+. Plus. That is different alternate versions of the Star Wars universe through a, I don't know if it's a purely Japanese lens. I haven't watched it yet, um, but at least an Asian lens. Uh, and this is, I think the duel was the first episode. And each episode is different, has a different style, different characters, different stories, everything. Uh, but I believe the duel is the first episode, and that's what this is. Um, to say inspired, inspired by the world of the duel. So there you go. And what this is, so you have this Ronin and his droid B556, which is how I say it. Do other people, would other people say B556? I don't know. I just go B556. Excuse me a moment. There we go. Um, so, uh, this Ronin and his droid, uh, he's hunting down Sith. And whew, I'm, try I'm trying to avoid, like, all sorts of stuff here. So, he's, he's out on the Outer Rim. He's hunting down Sith. After he has an encounter with some bandits and a Sith, he ends up um, with this group who want his help hunting down the witch. And so he falls in with these people and they have adventures or a, one big grand adventure, however you want to look at it. Oof, try not to give anything away. Um, so, it took me a little while to get into the style of this, but once I did, I was in. Um, all right, up front, I have to admit, I probably have a little bias here. I'm a Star Wars fan. I'm a fan of samurai fiction. So you throw those two together, I'm in. I was. It's been a long time since I've been so excited to pick up a, a new book. Uh, yes, there are authors. There's new books coming out all the time that I'm excited about. But as soon as I heard about this one, I was in. I wanted it. I've never read anything by this author before. I have not watched the show, but I wanted to read this book. And I was not disappointed. There you go. Spoilers for the end of the video. Um, so, this is now Star Wars, the original, A New Hope. I don't think anybody can argue. I mean, they can because, you know, you're free to argue whatever you want. But essentially, it takes a lot from the uh, Akira Kurosawa movie, or Kurosawa Akira movie, The Hidden Fortress. I believe I have that correct. Um, I know that's the movie. I believe it's a Kurosawa film. Uh, so there's already this, we have this possibly one of the, or well, definitely one of the most famous science fiction movies ever made that takes a lot from a samurai movie. Um, so it feels natural, I think, to mash, really mash these two worlds together. And samurai fiction, uh, at least the good stuff, seems to fit well with a lot of things. I mean, you have a, there are a few westerns, quite a few, that are literally remakes of, well, again, Kurosawa films. 
Of course, uh, The Magnificent Seven, the remake of The Seven Samurai. I can never remember if it's a fistful of dollars or for a few dollars more, but one of those is a remake of Yojimbo. Um, which I've seen both versions of both of those movies. I'm a Kurosawa fan. Uh, arguably, the Mandalorian TV show is heavily influenced by Lone Wolf and Cub, uh, which I have a box set of the movies, but that's based on a manga, which I do not have. I have had some in the past. I've read it. Love it. Um, so anyway, I'm, what I'm saying is this all works. Uh, so the, there's, there's a lot of lore in this story that is parceled out bit by bit. Um, and it's, it's an interesting mix in that we have what essentially is a masterless samurai in all the accoutrement of a samurai with a droid. And the droid's wearing a straw hat. And there's they when we meet them, they're traveling a path. They get to a tea house just on the outskirts of a village. But then bandits come in, and we're getting things like um, land speeders and different things. And then there's obviously Sith. And the uh, this is no spoiler. It's in the on the flap the the ronin is a former sith and one of the things that i love about this character is that his lightsaber is broken so that it will not shut off which is why he has to have this scabbard um <laughs> so i thought that was really cool he had to fashion this scabbard because his lightsaber won't shut off and then he also has a second shorter lightsaber um and he does carry a blaster as well <laughs> but um and then these there are certain we learn this isn't anything important so i don't mind saying it but the sith were able to fashion their sabers do something so that Essentially, a lot of them were, will reflect uh, Japanese weapons, ancient Japanese weapons. So one person made theirs so that it was like a fan. One um, is like a parasol. But all things that uh, we, we being people in the world, have seen used as weapons in stories and movies and different things. Uh, I thought that was really cool. So then, um, after some things happen, the uh, the Ronin meets this these people on the starship, and um, so there's this older woman that is they call her Auntie, and there's a traveler. They essentially they call him the Traveler or Fox because he wears a fo they excuse me wear a fox mask and plays the flute badly and the there's the pilot of the ship and I think that's where we start and then the Ronin and B556 join them I love the pilot character absolutely the purest character I think just in terms of honesty motivation um, hope positivity um they're fantastic and everybody else seems to have secret motives or maybe not the purest motives or hidden agendas which i guess is the same as secret motives um but the pilot uh akia see i don't know i'm just going with what i believe i know about how you pronounce japanese words so i think her name is pronounced akia or, but I'm not sure where the accent would go. Anyway, she's a great character. Absolutely love her. Um, and then there's the there's a Sith who's chasing after the Ronin for reasons that I'm not going to 
talk about right now because that's a big part of the story. And But uh, the Ronin meets these people on this ship and they want to hunt down the witch who was um, one of ostensibly one of the leaders of the Sith before they fell apart and the Ronin started hunting them down. Uh, but the witch does bad things and so they want stopped. Um, trying to think of like the little things that I can tell you. Uh, I don't think it, I don't think it's wrong to tell you that uh, the Empire in this case is Japanese based, I suppose. There was an Emperor and the Jedi were essentially the Samurai and they had lords and they um, were um Oh, I can't think of the word. They worked for the... That's not how I want to put it, but basically the samurai, this lord has this many Jedi working for them. Um, this lord has these Jedi working for them. And of course, it's, you know, the Jedi will lay down their life to protect their lord, but the uh, there was a rebellion which formed the Sith, um, and then the the emperor has uh, died at some point and has two sons that are essentially vying for control. There seems to be a bit of a detente, but they also seem to be looking for any reason to go to war. So one of them can just take over the empire. Um, so there's still Jedi around. The Sith, not so much anymore because Ronan's been hunting them down. So all of this is the 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 world that we're in. But then we also, again, have spaceships and blasters and droids and all these other, the, the Star Wars elements of it. And as I said, information is parceled out. It, it's a slow trail to find out who the Ronin is, uh, what his backstory is, what's driving him to do what he does. And the same thing, uh, can be said for a number of the characters. And, yeah, so there's a lot of that, which I really like. Um, I like the interactions between the characters. Once I got into it, after the first chapter or so, I enjoyed the writing style. Um, this is an author I will be looking for more of their work. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are there any more points that I want to make? There, oof. I am not an expert on Star Wars. I've seen all the movies. I have not seen all of the TV shows. Essentially, I haven't seen the animated stuff. I've watched uh, The Mandalorian, both seasons of that. I've read some of the novels. I've read some of the novels that are now called Legends. I've read some of the novels that are considered at this point canon. Um, I've read some comic books, but I think, I think for the most part, the only comics I've read are the Marvel comics. The originals way back in the day, which I now have in collected editions, and then a little bit of the new stuff since Marvel reacquired the Star Wars rights. But I don't think I've read any of the Dark Horse stuff. Um, so, that all being said, I can't say whether everything and anything in this book is the equivalent or analogous to things from the greater Star Wars universe. There's one thing that I feel at points is analogous to something, um... But I could just, that could just be me because of certain things in the book. And it's quite possible that was not the author's intent at all. But I, I, I don't think anything is meant to be analogous that isn't straight up, you know, Jedi, Sith, Empire. Um, that kind of thing. So I don't know that any character is supposed to represent any other character. I just remembered. 
excuse me, I have to look at something. There was a line that just, I loved it. Just a, a um, <clears throat> very simple example of this author's style. So I wrote down the page number. So let's go. Oh, look at that, man. I, I opened up real close, but I just want to read this one line. Okay. So basically, this is what it says. Um, so our, our cast of characters that we're following, um, some stuff has happened. They're in their ship, and Imperial ships are showing up. And so, uh, just this one line. Between one breath and the next, a sleek white imperial frigate appeared, sliding into place like a knife between ribs as it dropped out of hyperspace. I just love that line. And for anyone who has seen any of the Star Wars stuff and seen how ships come out of hyperspace... That line to me fits. It is very evocative. It put that image perfectly into my head. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's it's a great line in a great book. I gave it five out of five on Goodreads. I would love for more stuff with these characters or in this world. Um, I don't know. I have no idea what anybody's plans are for anything, but I would absolutely pick up more of this. Um, when I'm done recording for the evening, I'm going to finally watch this episode. I did not want to watch it before recording this review because even though I just finished the book at like, I don't know, six o'clock this morning, um, <laughs> I very easily, if I had watched the episode, could have incorporated some of that into the book. And I didn't want to do that, so I haven't watched it yet. Anyway, highly recommended. Um, I don't know how other Star Wars fans feel about this. Uh, I have not looked at any reviews, but I am going to because I'm curious as to how it's being received. Um... I have never been, oof, how do I say this without insulting anyone? Do I care if I insult anyone? I've never been the kind of fan that cares incredibly much about what's canon and what isn't. See, I was going to say that goes crazy, but that's kind of negative, and I don't want to be, you know, people can live their life as long as they're not assholes. Um, so, like, it, it doesn't bother me that a ton of these old Star Wars novels were made, were, are now called Legends, and aren't canon, although technically I don't think they were ever considered canon. Um, and uh, so... I love the and anybody who watches my channel on any type of regular basis knows I love alternate versions of things, multiverse kind of stuff. So this is absolutely right up my alley. Um, and it's yeah, it'll go with it'll go with my. I don't have a ton of Star Wars books anymore. I've kept basically my favorites, very few actually. I have a couple Darth Mauls or. Maul, because one of them, he's not a Darth yet. I have the two horrors, Death Troopers and Red Harvest, I believe they're called. And I have uh, Dr. Aphra, because Dr. Aphra is my favorite Star Wars character. I love Dr. Aphra. I'm buying a Dr. Aphra statue. Well, a little bust, you know, nothing big. Um, but I, I would put the Ronin up there now, as well as one of my favorite characters. Uh, Dr. Aphra's canon. The Ronin is not, but I don't care. I love it. It's fantastic. Five out of five. Um, if you're interested in <clears throat> feudal Japan, I'm not an expert on that, but I'm going to say that's what they're going for here. Uh, if you're interested in, in samurai-type stories, um, and if you aren't the kind to blow a gasket because this isn't canon Star Wars, 
I highly recommend this. Um, so, so good. Such a great cover. Great story. An author that I'm going to keep an eye on. So there you go. That's it. Um, and I guess my question for this video is going to be for the Star Wars fans. Because my question is... I'm going to keep it simple. Easiest question to answer if you're into Star Wars at all. Even if you're just a casual viewer. Who's your favorite character? I was going to get more complicated than that and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? No, let's just keep it simple. Who's your favorite Star Wars character? Um, I've already told you mine. Dr. Aphra. I've got the... Some of, not all of, the first run of Dr. Aphra comic books. I have uh, in trade paperback. I'm getting the current run of Dr. Aphra in trade paperback. So I have all the volumes of that that are out. I have the novel. Well, it's not a novel. It's a script for the audio book. But either way, and it's an adaptation of the stuff from the Darth Vader comic where she was introduced. Anyway... She's in a game that I have, and I always play as Dr. Afra because I love Dr. Afra. Think amoral Indiana Jones in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> love that character. Who do you like? You like one of the droids? Uh, my niece-in-law loves BB-8. Uh, obviously, I'm a fan of Maul slash Darth Maul because I have those novels um, as a kid. Like, when the first movie came out, of course, I was a big Han Solo fan. <coughs> big Darth Vader fan, of course. Um, I tend towards the dark side a bit. Uh, but I, I love, weirdly, R2-D2. Every time I see R2-D2 in something, I just remember how cool a design it is. And it's, I mean, it's an upside-down trash can on legs. Or is it even upside down? I don't know. It's a trash can on legs. But it's, I don't know, it's just such a cool design. Cooler than C-3PO. Yeah, I said it. Anyway, um, who do you like in the Star Wars universe? Um, so obviously I picked someone from the comic books. So it's open to anything. Any of the books, whether they're legends, canon, any of the movies, TV shows, doesn't matter. Who do you like? All right. That's it. So, uh, you can answer my question down in the comments below. If you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here at the Low Budget Review Show. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronin5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is... Eric Smith 5757. That's Eric with a K. E R I K S M I T H 5757. Uh, that's it. This has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith. And until next time, read more books. And I need to move that.